Hello students, it's your history teacher and I'm here with another online lecture. Today I will talk about Great Moravia. In the last video I mentioned how the Great Moravia was created and what happened before. So we are talking about the state that the Slovak territory was the part of and it was between the years 843 and 907. So when Moimir I established Great Moravia, it consisted of territories of Bohemia, Moravia, Slovakia, Northern Austria, Hungary and Southern Poland. You can see it in the map that is on the left. So there are different parts of Great Moravia and the Slovak territory is in its center. So like number two, Anfrey. Čiže to nitrianské kniežatstvo. As you can see, the East Frankish Empire was our neighbor country and there was a great influence and interest from their side. Moimir I tried to get out of their control, so the Franks invaded Great Moravia and of course I'm talking about like Eastern Franks and Eastern Frankish King Louis, Louis the German albo teda po slovensky Ludovic Nemec, čiže nechala som to v podstate to meno Nemec ako bolo v originále, ale teda vy viete, že je to Louis the German deposed Moimir I, so he overthrew him and named a new ruler who was a nephew of Moimir I and his name was Rastislav. Well, why did Louis the German depose Moimir and name the new ruler? He could rule to Great Moravia himself. Why did he do this? You know, mostly he had great territory to govern and more effective for him was to name a governor that would be his ally, okay? And that one should be Rastislav. Rastislav was an enemy of Moimir I, so they did not have good relationship, even though they were uncle and nephew. And so Rastislav made a treaty with Franks to become the king. But later, after some time, Rastislav turned against the Franks and defeated them in 855. So this treaty with Franks was just to get on the throne. Okay, this was the only reason why he made the Franks allies to defeat his uncle Moimir I and to become the king. However, the most important thing he made during his reign was invitation of Byzantine mission to Great Moravia. I will talk about that during the next online lecture because I want to go into further details about this mission. But I suppose that you know that Byzantine mission were in fact Cyril and Methodius or Constantine and Methodius as was his name during this mission. Okay, so this was really the most important thing during the Rastislav's reign. But also what happened during this period were the conflicts between Great Moravia and Eastern Frankish Empire. Because, you know, the Franks did not stop after they were defeated by Rastislav, okay, it continued. In around 865, Rastislav gave Principality of Nitra, that you can see over there, so the modern-day Slovakia, that was one of the parts of Great Moravia, so he gave that territory to Svetopluk, who was Rastislav's nephew. So, does it sound familiar? Well, it should because it was really the same position as with Moimir I and Rastislav. But Rastislav could see the potential of his nephew and he was afraid that Svetopluk will depose him from the throne. So he started to feel endangered by Svetopluk's abilities and prepared a trap for him. But Svetopluk was a smart guy and he recognized the danger, fled to Frankish Empire, so again he made allies out of the Franks, so he fled there, escaped there and gave them Rastislav as a prisoner. So the Franks blinded Rastislav and they kept him a prisoner. Čiže bola to veľmi podobná situácia. Legenda je taká, že Rastislav si pozval Svetopluka k sebe na hostinu a chcel ho otráviť. Svetopluk sa ale nedal, Rastislava zajal a odovzdal ho Frankom, ktorí ho oslepili a držali ho ako väzňa. To ale nebolo všetko. Not only Rastislav was imprisoned, the same thing happened to Svetopluk. Because they did not want to do the same mistake as they did with Rastislav, so they kept Svetopluk prisoner as well. 
But then a rebellion started against the Franks in Great Moravia. Because, you know, Great Moravia was without a rightful ruler and it was governed by the Franks. And people who inhabited Great Moravia did not like it, so they made a rebellion against the Franks. And Svetopluk was the one who used the situation for his own good. He offered his help to the Carloman, who was the son of Louis the German, to suppress the rebellion in Great Moravia. But during this campaign, he joined the Slavs living in the Great Moravia and defeated the Bavarian army to the Eastern Frankish army and Svetopluk himself became the new ruler. Je to trochu komplikované, že naozaj pustíte si to v chlúňa aj viackrát, chcem, aby ste poznali teda ten príbeh. Čiže Svetopluk a Rastislav sú väzňami. Tí východní Frankovia, o tých stále hovoríme, vládli na území Veľké Moravy. Obyvatelia s týmto faktom neboli spokojní a zorganizovali povstanie. Svetopluk sa sám ponúkol, že toto povstanie pomôže potlačiť, aby si teda polepšil svoju reputáciu u Frankov. Oni mu to povolili, teda syn ľudovita Nemca, Karloman, a počas teda tejto výpravy Svetopluk už kúl plán, ako sa Frankom vlastne vzoprieť. Teda počas tejto výpravy sa pripojil na stranu Slovanov z Veľkej Moravy a porazil túto bavorskú armádu. Bavorsk bola jedna z tých provincií, jedna z častí tej východnej Franckej ríše. Je to teda vlastne Bavorsko okolie dnešného Mníchova a Svetopluk sa stal po tomto víťazstve novým panovníkom vo Veľkej Morave. I suppose that all of you have heard the name Svetopluk. And this is maybe because he was the most famous king of Great Moravia because he extended territory of the empire to its highest extent and the Pope even accepted it as the independent empire. You know, you can see in the map that there are numbers and when you will put these numbers into the chronological order you will find out what was the process of expansion. Čiže vidíte, že jednotka je napríklad v tom moravskom kniežatstve, dvojka nidranské kniežatstvo a vlastne ako tá veľká morava sa zväčšovala. Čiže vidíte, že v podstate prvé bolo moravské kniežatstvo a poslednú tam máme 27, ktorá v podstate presahuje až južnú hranicu dnešného Maďarska. Okay? So all of these provinces belong to Great Moravia during the Svetopluk's reign. Okay, this can be really great help to you. So when you will study, please also look into the map. Okay, here I have the borders of Great Moravia. So you can see that in its biggest extent, it included Serbs, Bohemia, Vistilans, Great Moravia, the center, and Balaton Principality. The green area that is in the middle is the very center of Great Moravia. So mostly the area of modern day Slovakia and Moravia. You can also see the blue area that is in the east. So this is Eastern Frankish Empire. And you can see also Bulgaria, the kingdom that we mentioned as well during the Middle Ages. Uh, that is the orange area in the bottom of the picture. Here we have the two rulers of Great Moravia, uncle and nephew, Rastislav, uncle who became the king after Moimir I, who invited Byzantine mission to Great Moravia, and he was, in the end of his life, blinded and kept as a prisoner by the Franks because he planned to kill his nephew Svetopluk because he felt endangered by his abilities. So the picture on the right is Svetopluk, as you can see, the most famous king of Great Moravia. He had great Skills. He expanded Great Moravia to its higher extent and I know they look a lot similar but I want you to remember them because I will definitely put pictures of the rulers into the test. So also from the previous lectures. So Samo, Moimir, Privina, Rastislav, Svetopluk. Okay, I really want you to remember them from these particular pictures. And I will also tell you something about the end of Great Moravia. I think we all know the famous legend about Svetopluk and his sons. 
So according to this legend, he had three sons, Monje II, Svetopluk II and Preslav. Legend says, while King Svetopluk was dying, he commanded to bring his sons. He got out of bed, took three twigs into his hands and he gave it firstly to Moimir, then Svetopluk and Pretzal in the end. He wanted them to break the twigs on their knees. Neither of them could do it. Then he divided those twigs and gave one to each of them. The sons broke it without much effort. The king wanted them to take a piece of advice of it. When they will argue with each other and they will not fight against their enemy together, it will be easy to fail as future rulers. The thing we know is that after Svetopluk's death, empire was divided between his two sons, Moimir II and Svetopluk II. We also know that they did not take an advice out of this lecture, if it was true or not. In one year a quarrel was set up among them and made Great Moravia weaker and also lost some of the territories, Pannonia and Bohemia. Pannonia was basically this Balaton principality, so the south of Great Moravia, and Bohemia is the part of modern day Czech Republic. One thing we do not know is whether Pretzel even existed, because we only know about Moimir II and Svetopluk II. Pretzel is only mentioned in legend. Okay? I can also ask about this legend in the test, so please pay attention to it. This division of the empire and its instability was not caused only by the quarrel between these two sons of Svetopluk, but also because the danger coming from the neighbors that wanted to misuse the situation, that the kingdom did not have actually one strong ruler as the Svetopluk was. And these were the Franks, so the Eastern Franks saw their opportunity in this. And finally, Great Moravia was destroyed after three battles with the Hungarians, so not the Eastern Franks, but the Hungarians, the tribes coming from the East, from Asia, during the period of migration of nations, they wanted to settle in there. Well, so, to sum up the causes of the end of Great Moravia. It was the relationship between Moimir II and Svetopluk II that were not really good. So these two were quarreling, they could not make an agreement about development of the country. The second are the Eastern Franks who wanted to misuse the situation and still try to take the territory and the last one are the old Hungarians who came to this territory and wanted to settle in there. And the last thing I will mention are the historical sources that mention Great Moravia. So written sources from which we know about the state. These are Annals of Fulda, Fulske Anali, to je vlastne špecifický typ kroniky, zapisu, Fredegars, Chronicle, tu už sme si spomínali, čiže Fredegárová kronika, ktorá nám hovorila napríklad aj o samovej ríši. Then, the conversion of the Bavarians and the Carantinians. Po slovenskej sa to volá o obrátení Bavorov a Korutáncov a naznačuje to teda ich prechod na kresťanstvo, čiže obrátenie na inú vieru. And then, life of Constantine and life of Methodius. There are basically biographies talking about lives of these two Byzantine brothers. Dobre, čo život Konštantína, život metoda, toto sú teda najdôležitejšie historické pramenie. Pamätajte si aj tie. So the very most important things you need to know are the territories that the Great Moravia consisted of, what happened to Moimir I, who was Rastislav, what important he did during his lifetime, how Svetopluk got on the throne, what were the relationships between Moimir I, Rastislav and Svetopluk, why is Svetopluk the most famous king of Great Moravia, Okay, you can also help yourself with the map. I want to know what was the center of Great Moravia, what other parts belong to Great Moravia, who were the neighbors and so on. I want you to remember pictures of Rastisal and Svetopluk also with the other representatives of states we had on our territory. I want you to know the legend about Svetopluk's sons. Uh, to remember that we don't know if Bratislav existed, what were the causes 
of the end of Great Moravia and the main historical sources. Okay, so you need to remember that from this online lecture. Okay, so study on a regular basis and until the next online lecture, bye.